Myrette on the High Wire. 100 years ago in Paris, when theaters and music halls drew traveling players from all over the world, the best place to stay was at the Widow Gattu's, a boarding house on English Street. Acrobats, jugglers, actors, and mimes from as far away as Moscow and New York reclined on the widow's feathered mattresses and devoured her kidney stews. Madame Gatou worked hard to make her guests comfortable, and so did her daughter, Myrette. The girl was an expert at washing linens, chopping leeks, paring potatoes, and mopping floors. She was a good listener, too. Nothing pleased her more than to overhear the vagabond players tell of their adventures in this town or that along the road. One evening, a tall, sad-faced stranger arrived. He told, him, he told Madame Gatou he was Bellini, a retired high-wire walker. I am here for a rest, he said. I have just the room for you, Monsieur Bellini, in the back, where it's quiet, she said, but it's on the ground floor with no view. Perfect, said the stranger. I will take my meals alone. The next afternoon, when Myrette came for the sheets, there was the stranger crossing the courtyard on air. Myrette was enchanted. Of all the things a person could do, this must be the most magical. Her feet tingled as if they wanted to jump up on the wire beside Bellini. Myrette worked up the courage to speak. Excuse me, Monsieur Bellini, I want to learn to do that, she cried. Bellini sighed. That would not be a good idea, he said. Once you start, your feet are never happy again on the ground. Oh, please teach me, Myrette begged. My feet are already unhappy on the ground. But he shook his head. Myrette watched him every day. He would slide his feet onto the wire, cast his eyes ahead, and cross without ever looking down, as if in a trance. Finally, she couldn't resist any longer. When Bellini was gone, she jumped up on the wire to try it herself. Her arms flailed like windmills. In a moment, she was back on the ground. Bellini made it look so easy. Surely, she could do it too if she kept trying. In ten tries, she balanced one foot for a few seconds. In a day, she managed three steps without wavering. Finally, after a week of many, many falls, she walked the length of the wire. She couldn't wait to show Bellini. He was silent for a long time. And then he said, In the beginning, everyone falls. Most give up. But you kept trying. Perhaps you have talent as well. Oh, thank you, said Myrette. She got up two hours earlier every day to finish her chores before the sun shone in the courtyard. The rest of the day was for lessons and practice. Bellini was a strict master. Never let your eyes stray, he told her day after day. Think only of the wire and of crossing to the end. When she could cross dozens of times without falling, he taught her the wire walker's salute. Then she learned to run, to lie down, and to turn a somersault. I will never, ever fall again, Myrette shouted. Do not boast, Bellini said so sharply that Myrette lost her balance and had to jump down. One night, an agent from Astley's Hippodrome in London rented a room. He noticed Bellini on his way to dinner. What a shock to see him here, he exclaimed. See who? asked a mime. Why, the great Bellini. Didn't you know that he was in the room in the back? Bellini, the one who crossed Niagara Falls on a thousand foot wire in ten minutes, asked the mime. And on the way back, stopped in the middle to cook an omelet on a stove full of live coals. Then he opened a bottle of champagne and toasted the crowd, the agent recalled. My uncle used to talk about that, said the juggler. Bellini crossed the Alps with baskets tied to his feet, fired a cannon over the bullring in Barcelona, walked a flaming wire wearing a blindfold in, the, in Naples. The man had the nerves of an iceberg, the agent said. 
Myrette raced to Bellini's room. Is it true, she cried, you did all those things? Why didn't you tell me? I want to do them too, I want to go with you. I can't take you, said Bellini. But why not, asked Myrette. Bellini hesitated a long time. Because I am afraid, he said at last. Myrette was astonished. Afraid, she said, but why? Once you have fear on the wire, it never leaves, Bellini said. But you must make it leave, Myrette insisted. I cannot, said Bellini. Myrette turned and ran to the kitchen as tears sprang to her eyes. She had felt such a joy on the wire. Now Bellini's fear was like a cloud casting its black shadow on all she had learned from him. Bellini paced his room for hours. It was terrible to disappoint Myrette. By dawn, he knew that if he didn't face his fear at last, he could not face Myrette. He knew what he must do. The question was, could he succeed? That night, when the agent returned, Bellini was waiting for him. The agent listened to Bellini's plan with mounting excitement. I'll take care of it, he promised. To himself, he added, a big crowd will make me a tidy profit. What luck, I just happen to be in Paris now. Bellini went out to find a length of hemp with a steel core. He borrowed a winch and worked until daylight, securing the wire. The next evening, Myrette heard the commotion in the street. Go and see what it is, her mother said. Maybe it will cheer you up. In the square was a hubbub. The crowd was so thick she couldn't see at first, and the agent was aiming a spotlight in the sky. Return of the great Bellini, he was yelling. Could it be? Myrette's heart hammered in her chest. Bellini stopped, stepped out onto the wire to salute the crowd. He took a step and then froze. The crowd cheered wildly, but something was wrong. Myrette knew at once what it was. For a moment, she was f as frozen as Bellini was. Then she threw herself at the door behind her, ran inside, up flight after flight of stairs, and out through the skylight to the roof. She stretched her hands to Bellini. He smiled and began to walk toward her. He stepped onto the wire and with the most intense pleasure, as she had always imagined it might be, she started to cross the sky. Bravo, bravo, roared the crowd. Protege of the great Bellini, shouted the agent. He was beside himself, already planning the world tour of Bellini and Myrette. As for the master and his pupil, they were thinking only of the wire and crossing to, and of crossing to the end.